It's thought that up to 27 million people in the world today are caught up in some form or other of slavery. About 800,000 are being trafficked across borders every year. What might surprise you, though, is that one magnet for those exploiting others for sex or forced labour is Britain. Artie's Laura Smith investigates why. I wasn't allowed out. I wasn't allowed to do anything. I was the one doing all the cleaning and cooking and looking after the children. But I wasn't even allowed to take the kids to school. I was locked inside the house and there was no way I could open the door from the inside. It sounds like something from an 18th century workhouse, but it's Britain today. Sarah was trafficked to this country aged 12. Now 19, she's still too afraid to talk about her experience. But the fact that she's played here by an actor doesn't make her horrific story any less real. I was getting beaten by the men. I was smacked and raped. I kept getting raped and they tied me up and did things. I was like a slave and every time I kept bleeding. I kept trying to clean myself up and I kept getting called and she was shouting, asking me to keep cleaning. Even if the house is clean, I still have to keep cleaning. Eventually, Sarah's female employer threw her out of the house. Aged just 14, with no way of contacting relatives at home, she lived on the streets for nine months, begging, until she eventually found help through ECPAT, an international group campaigning against child trafficking. It's a story that's all too common, and it's not just about domestic slavery. According to experts, many people are trafficked to work on cannabis farms in the UK and they're often kept in a perpetual cycle of debt or through fear of repercussions for their families. But another sector that ECPAT says is rife with trafficking victims, particularly from Asia, is high street nail bars. So next time you go for a manicure or pedicure, ask yourself who's serving you and is the salon their cell? Figures from the Interdepartmental Ministerial Group on Human Trafficking show it's risen by 33% compared to last year and victims come from all over the world, Africa, Europe and the Far East. I think last year, police estimate, more than 2,000 people, there were 2,000 victims found. Now if there were 2,000 victims, say they were just 10%, that means there are 20,000 people um, trafficked into this country each year. It is a huge business. It, it, it's, for for, for organised criminal gangs, this is the second most profitable thing to drugs and a lot less chance of getting caught. That rise could be because more cases are being reported. But Chloe Setter, who works with trafficking victims, including Sarah, says it's partly down to a lack of police awareness. Only eight cases of trafficking were successfully prosecuted last year. Trafficking is seen not just in the UK but worldwide as um, a low-risk, high-profit crime. Um, so those criminals who might have previously been smuggling drugs or arms um, may now be looking to also smuggle children and people because the child can be recycled, the human can be recycled, the drugs once they're sold they've gone, they have a one-off price. So there's a n number of ways that they're controlled and, and, and once that happens they are literally sort of assigned to that trafficker for, a, for possibly a long, long time unless the authorities do something to intervene. Anthony Steen, founder of a parliamentary group on trafficking, is leading the biggest ever conference on the subject held in Britain. Slavery is a trade a modern day slavery is alive and well and ten times the size of what it was when it was abolished 200 years ago. But prosecution relies heavily on hearsay, evidence and testimony. And huge numbers of victims like Sarah never want to talk about their experiences again. Laura Smith, RT, London.